this. But the key thing here is that we've got to build then the foundations or a holding environment or some kind of container to do this work. Um, if you think back to that slide earlier about the technical management work and the work we're trying to do with adaptive complex changes, it can be really disruptive. We've got to have a separate um, way of working with that. And that could be, it could take a whole range of forms. I've seen people in a monthly meeting go, right, we're going to have an hour then reflecting on what we're learning, reflecting on how we're working together and reflecting on our adaptation. But you can't do it in the day-to-day -day work. Or you take a few days out like you're doing now to actively look at what is the adaptive work of the organization. Because straight away as you do it, you're going to have conflict. And actually that's what we want. We, and this is kind of counterintuitive that we want to bring together people who've got different views about the issue to go, okay, how are we perceiving the problem and what different solutions? So this analogy of a pressure cooker is a really useful one to think about a holding environment because what we're trying to do is really we're trying to create a new recipe. We're saying that for some of the issues we're trying to tackle, we don't have a recipe for it. We've got to create a different dish. Now, we don't want to use a wok to cook it in because that cooks really fast and the heat dissipates. It goes out, you know, if we cook it too fast, it gets stuck to the bottom. We actually want this to cook slowly because we know it's going to take time and we want to keep the heat, which is really just the fact that we will see this differently. We want to keep that in the container. So that notion of having that wee valve that you put on the top of a pressure cooker that keeps the heat in means you can control it. You can take it off to let some steam out or you can put it back on to keep the heat to allow things to cook slowly because it can't cook unless there's any heat. Now, in adaptive complex work, we've got to have the heat is really bringing different views in, but systems are really good at managing that away. You know, when we've got someone who's dis who is disagreeing with the way forward, we're very quick at managing it away, yeah? So remember we talked about systems being ruthless recruiters of status quo. That's gonna keep on happening unless you actively, and everybody takes a role, is trying to surface the different ideas. So thinking about this pressure cooker, um, and there's a handout that you've got on this, is it's usually made up of a whole range of different components. And like with a pressure cooker, you need it to be really kind of solid on the outside so it can be loose and messy. You know, you talked earlier about, do you just accept it's going to be messy? Well, yes, as long as there's some tight structures in place which can hold people in it. And the type of things that you would be looking for and thinking about are, there needs to be some level of trust to start the work. Now, that just might be that people trust you that you're trying to lead people into, let's have a different conversation about this work. You might be the holding environment, that you're convening people, you're trying to generate a different conversation. So thinking about, is there sufficient trust that you're, um, the different people have with you, or where does that lie? Essentially, commitment to purpose, that there's a shared purpose that is what is convening people and bringing them in. So... Sharon talked about with Go Goldfields that there was that commitment to purpose around we've got to change things for the kids in this region. And the other thing was there was some urgency about it. There was a catalyst. There was a, there was a pain point which led people to come into this environment to do things differently. Because again, without that, we're going to keep doing things if there's no imper imperative to change. So thinking about what's the purpose, but also what's the pain point that people are going to be, um, it's going to be sufficient enough to hold people in this process. Again, that there's a clear function of authority. Those things around um, direction, protection and order are there. And that will be someone who plays that role. And again, that could be you, you know, whoever's convening or facilitating is holding that structure. And there's sufficient structure so that people can then um, have dialogue in it. So again, how I've seen this being done is that um, an organization has convened different stakeholders around an issue, found people who've all got a stake in that, but said to them, okay, we're going to be in this process for the next six months. So there's clear time boundaries on it. 
we're going to spend two hours each time we come together, once a fortnight, working on the adaptive work. So people are really clear on expectations and structure. There's some kind of ritual. So um, on this example, I'm thinking of it's in the community Burke in regional New South Wales which is being led by the Aboriginal community. They're working across sectors and working with some of the power base in Sydney. What they do every time they come together, and I think I spoke to you about this on the last day, is one of the members of community will talk about why they're there and then bring it back to purpose, about trying to get different outcomes for their young people in Burke, trying to divert them from prison. So that's, they bring in a personal story every time about why are we here? that connection to purpose and having a ritual around it. So thinking about the physical environment, you know, taking people out from where they normally are to have this conversation um, and being very clear on the expectations of staying in it. Consequences and accountability, I think, are really key in a holding environment because it's quite, it's going to be so tempting to revert back to doing technical work that unless there's some consequences of not showing up not staying in the process, then people are going to drop out quite quickly. So think about what does that look like? And the other parts to this are far more adaptive. So things like knowing your own capability to hold the tension. So this is where the more adaptive skills come in, that if you're trying to engage people in an adaptive process, what's your own default when it comes to conflict? Are you someone who's kind of conflict averse or do you like conflict what's your muscle what does it look like because if you're not able to hold that people will be looking to you all the time for signals around how do we deal with this so knowing you know this might be a development area for you that you need to do some work on and reputation so again this is around not just your authority and power but um, how are you perceived are people going to come into this knowing that they are going to be um, safe enough, and I'm specifically using the word safe enough because challenging status quo is never safe, and bringing together different views is never safe, but we need to feel, people need to know, I'm willing to go the distance with you, or with your organisation, because we're aligned, and because of your reputation, and that there's really these last two, the common values and the relationship are often the glue, that you've got the relationships that people will authorise you to do this, um, and often that's around common values, even though you may disagree about the way to achieve those or to get the outcomes. And in fact, you want people in this container who have different views on that. So these are all aspects or elements of a holding environment that you would expect to see if you were going to try and take people through some type of adaptive process to explore this. <coughs> 